Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams, and we're getting this 22-23 season kicked off um, in a great way. Um, we're doing this uh, in memory of my teammate, Adamola Okalaja, who we lost this past uh, summer. Um, great individual, great person, but more importantly, he was my brother. And we, fought, we felt like there was no other way to get the Carolina conversation started off this season without having the rest of my brothers participate in our first segment of the Carolina's conversation. Brent, what was your first encounter and your first thoughts of Adamola Okalaji when you met him? My first thoughts or just like my just most important thoughts? What are you talking about? Yeah, your first thought, the first time you encountered him. Um, hey, how you doing? Adamola, I just thought that like, he's just a genuine good guy. You know, everything was about, you know, trying to explain things to the young guys. Because, you know, like, you got that that point zone. He's trying to explain things to guys where they need to be, what's important, how you need to carry yourself. And, you know, like he came, Adam Ola came off as really, really polished and really, really caring about everybody in on that team. And, you know, that's that's not always the norm. You know, we're, all, we're young, we selfish, but he never had that. He never really seemed selfish. He never had that selfish bone in his body. We always talk about a guy that embodies team. That's Adam Olokalaji. He was always about the team and what can help the team and how can we be better for the team. And that's that's rare when you're talking about, you know, guys 18, 19, 20 years old all trying to make it to the NBA, you know. Right. <laughs> we, we can be selfish at times. Not myself, but other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's you. Not you, not you. Now, uh, Michael, you were young too when you came out. Mola was a junior, if I'm not mistaken, when you came, or sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. Yeah, it's sophomore. So, so what were your thoughts on Adi when you, you know, you, you first encountered when you, when you got yeah. to school? Yeah, I think I'd like to echo kind of what Brendan said. I mean, just being young, and you know, I'm from rural Georgia, and it, it was, you know. Guys that were welcoming guys, you know, like Twan, like like the other guys that were kind of more established stars, so to speak, like you um, and the other guys that have been there a while, you know, um, y'all were all welcoming, but Adamola especially, you know, just um, as Brendan said, just, you know, we had a lot of guys that obviously sacrificed um, their, their shots, their minutes, starting spots with a rotation of six. And so we had a lot of unselfish guys, I believe, in, in general. Uh, a lot of guys that cared about their teammates, but he was obviously one that, you know, embraced, like Brendan said, embraced the young guys and just kind of made us feel at home and just a humble guy, um, just real low key. Um, and, and I appreciated all of y'all, but, you know, especially him as well and, and embracing me and uh, making me feel like a part of things, especially as a medical red shirt. You know, I didn't come in right away and play a lot or play, you know, practice even initially until the last three months of my first year. So just having him and, the rest of the guys kind of embraced me, you know, made me feel more at ease and more comfortable in my transition from um, from Georgia to, to, to playing a, a, at a school like Carolina. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I want to get this perspective. I want to get this perspective. <clears throat> Orlando, you being an international superstar and coming to UNC, you know, and Alamoda was an international superstar as well. So how did you guys kick it off? How was he for you? Especially you kind of having similar backgrounds, you know, being, you know, international players. Well, the <laughs> first time I met him was uh, my visit and uh, my official visit. And we were actually, you guys were playing uh, pickup. And I think the Duke boys were, in, were playing against you guys. And I came in and I, I played with y'all. And I remember, I mean, I was like 180, no shirt, and you guys got no shirt. I'm like, oh, shit, I got, I'm sorry for that. What do you know? I was like, I'm the skinny guy. Skinny guy is going to go in with these guys. And, and you know, I kind of had a, a good pickup game for, you know, my first time with you guys. And then I, everybody was chilling, and he came up to me with, like, with the swag that he had. You know, you know what I'm saying? He was like, I heard you can jump. Show me some. And then – I went to jump and did a uh, in between the legs backwards, and kind of like from that point on, I'm like, all right, I kind of got his respect. Uh, uh, you know, he, I gained respect from him, 
And from that point on, it's like, you know, I understand where you're coming from. It's a different culture. It's a shocking thing because I came as an exchange student to the mountains, and now it's a whole different ball game of students from everywhere. Now you transition them from being a high school kid into a, 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 a college student to a man fully. And he was there like all the time. And then I got hurt. And I know Newbie got a story about this because my English was still horrible. And I said my finger, and I said my toe. And I looked at Yo, Don't blame that on me, blame that on the ball. So you kept grabbing you, you holding your foot. You talking about my finger, my finger. My finger says my you holding your foot. I was translating. We don't understand that fingers and toes meant the same thing in Spanish. So I was translating that. And Newbie's laughing, he's laughing. But then that whole first year, I got hurt. It was a it was a, a very frustrating time, and he was there. Like I was talking to him all the time because he understood the the part of being away from your family, and 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 I found a support from him emotionally in that in that time, and and that's that's my whole first of he many counts. stories of Adi. Yeah, and so. I'm going to go to Maktar and then Tuan and then T. Newby. But first and foremost, I want to go to you, Webb. <clears throat> Webb, you, you know, a lot of people don't know the influential part that you played in our basketball team. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of allude to those types of things when, you know, when I have an, an opportunity to, to talk about, uh, you know, our transformation uh, in that 97 team. But, uh, you know, you know, you, you, you can really depict and, and 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 talk about all of us because you were just that type of guy that were very was very observant um and you knew how to reach all of us um in, in your own certain way so you know tell us your thoughts about automola yeah so the what an amazing guy he uh, i remember when i was walking on the team my junior year which would have been 95 90 96 um he would have been a freshman with uh Vince and Antoine I just remember the intensity he was a very intense player on the court and um he said some word all the time I I, I bet y'all could repeat it like when he Stick got frustrated. Sick, yeah Stick yeah <laughs> I, yeah so he would say that so I uh, you know I remember that about him but you know off the court he was he had an, a very infectious and contagious smile and he was humble. He was genuinely kind. Uh, he loved life. I know we had a lot of fun in the locker room. We had a lot of fun on trips. Uh, one of my memories uh, during the off season, he went down to the beach with uh, Charlie and me and a group of people. And we stopped back in Kinston where I grew up and my parents cooked the meal for everybody. And, had this old car as I'm like a 1940 uh, replica MG. And he was like, I want to ride that. I want to <laughs> drive that. And so my mom and dad got a picture of him driving this car. It's like a, I mean, a really tiny 1940 MG car and six, nine Adam is in there smiling, you know, huge smile. And anyway, I, I, uh, I, I respected him as I did all the guys that I was able to cheer for and, and play with. Um, but just the intensity, he was a fierce competitor. Uh, when he stepped on the court, like he was going to give it all, all he had. And, uh, but at, off the court, he was genuinely kind, you know, just like all you guys were. I mean, I was the last guy on the bench, but, you know, he treated me with a lot of respect. And I, I uh, remember just getting emails from him, you know, after we had finished playing and staying in touch and just, genuinely wanted to know how you were doing. Yeah, no question. No question. <clears throat> and so uh, I think it leads me to Antoine right now. Antoine, now, Adamola, yourself, and Vince, y'all came in as the, <laughs> whoo, hey. the three <laughs> amigos. <laughs> So, you know, talking about the three amigos, man, you know, I don't know if you knew who Adamola was. Had you had met him before, you know, we came to campus. Um, but, you know, what was your first impression of Adamola when you, when you, you know, when you first met him? 
I, I think the one thing that really stands out and everybody's speaking upon it, you know, Adamo was a very genuine person. Mm -hmm. um, kind, always respectful, uh, but also when he saw or felt any disrespect, Adamo would not hesitate whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We got a guy on this, on, on this phone call who used to always make fun of his name. And you know, Adam Mo would be ready to fight you when you disrespect his name or his culture or anything like that. And that was the type of friend he was. You know, me and Adam Mo never got into an argument. If it was, it was about, you know, playing a game of basketball. Because we, we always pushed each other to be the best at our crowd. And him and Vince and the rest of the guys did that as well. But, I mean, he has so much respect for you as a person. Anybody associated with the, the university, Adam Muller went over and beyond. I remember when Vince, his last game uh, in the NBA, Adam Muller flew over all the way from Germany to pay res his respects and to be there for Vince. And that's the type of person he was. He always had your back. I, I remember the time, this is a funny story. <laughs> um, I had somebody call my room and they said they was going to meet us downstairs. <laughs> and I went and I let my teammates know what was going on. And Oliver Muller was the first person to have my back. He had a two by four in his hand, but he was ready to, you know, defend his brothers. And that's, that's who he was. You know, to the day he died, he had pride, he had respect, but most importantly, he was a tall hill and he loved the University of North Carolina, his teammates and so forth. So my relationship with him has been all about respect. It was an honor to call him my brother for such a long time. And uh, like I said, always smiling, always upbeat. He pushed us in practice. I mean, he didn't give you an inch whatsoever. I remember we used to have our meetings after the games. We talk about the plus points and, you know, he's pushing me to play better on defense because, you know, I want to hear my name getting called because Automola always had the most, the most plus points because of deflections, diving on the floor. You know, we in practice, he just, he just pushed us to be the best uh, on the court, but also off the court, you know, live the right way, you know, talk to people with respect and always be there for others. And that's who, that's who he was. That's the type of friend he was, not only to myself, but of course, everybody on this call and pretty much everybody he encountered as well. Yeah. I think that's a great depiction. Great depiction of him. Um, and now I guess I'm going to go to my, my, my other brother who's the captain with me. I think he may be, you know, referenced as the person that Antoine may have been talking about would call, I think, would call. <laughs> mola, 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 mola. Hey, man, not my name. I, I'm not, I, I'm going to let him speak on what he would call out of Mola and out of Cola. Uh, you know, um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I bring to the table uh, the Magtar. Ja. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, uh, I think this is a great idea. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, speak about Oak because uh, we were together last weekend and uh, they honored us. You know, Brendan, you were not there, but Antoine took your envelopes, so he sent you a check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I mean it was good for all of us to see each other and all that but I think the common thing was just seeing Adekola among us kind of brought back Ademola spirit you know and I think it was it was important for us to kind of share those moments because we all had some type of dealing with Ademola that affected our lives in a positive way uh I was probably one of the few guys who spoke to him last before he passed. And uh, just to tell you how proud and how much pride Ademola has, he didn't even want me to know that he was sick. I was telling Antoine that because he would call me and turn on the music loud in his house to make me believe that he's at the mall. And typical Ademola, hey man, you know, hey, it's loud here, I'll call you back. I'm like, why are you calling me in the first place if you're going to call me back? So that would be our argument for like a good 30, 40 seconds. And then he will hang up. So knowing that he's not here among us right now, I mean, and it's an everyday thing with me, to be honest, because just like how Coach Smith affected us, 
in a positive way, his sayings and all that. Ademola was kind of like that for me. He was he used to call himself my conscience. Because knowing me, you guys all you guys know me, they know I'm impulsive and what? I'm, no, no, <laughs> well, I'm being serious here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh well anyway you know I'm, I'm i'm down with my team you know i'll do whatever it takes for my team if i consider you family i mean you family till the end and uh ademola was a brother you know not only he gave me that love but i gave it back to him but he showed it to me every chance he had you know oak would call me at two or three in the morning just over some stupid stuff so he can, i can cuss his ass out or call him coca-cola because he hated that <laughs> Coca Cola and Pepsi Cola. <laughs> Come on, that's why I was calling that. All right. I know. <laughs> and he hated you. You know, I know. So, whenever I would talk to him, and then when it's time to hang up, I would call him, all right, Coca Cola. And he would, the conversation would take another hour. He would be, Don't call me that. You know, this is not my name. And I'm Nigerian, you know, da da da. Start giving me the history of, you know, whatever. But that's who Ademolo was, you know. Ademolo was the guy that, uh, if you want to fight, and then he's there, you know, he's going to come fight with you, regardless of who he, he might get his ass whooped, but he's going to be there with you. He's not going to tell you, go and call me back when the fight is over, you know. But uh, that's another story. But, you know, <laughs> the thing TV. that touches me a lot was his loyalty. Yeah. Ademola was very loyal, you know. Actually, he was loyal to a fault. So I'm going to give you guys just this quick story about him. When he became an agent, there was a player he dealt with. He took the players from like zero all the way to the top. And I remember telling him, I'm like, oh, you don't live in the States. Let's do a deal, you and I. You know, I take care of the player here. And then whenever you come, you take over. But he had already broke a deal with another agency. And he knew that was not the right deal. But he was so loyal to his beliefs that he was willing to put like his, you know, everything on the side and to see if that was gonna work. Cause he always said to me, well, you're here, you're not going anywhere. So when I come back, even if the deal is not good, you're gonna take me anyway, because we're family. And he got fucked, you know, excuse my French. That's what happened. They used them, you know, the player went with the other guy and uh, Ademola did not get a dime of that deal. And I, it was kind of crazy because I would talk to him and he would always ask me about the player. How is he doing? Do you have his number? I'm like, why do you need to talk to him for? Oh, you know, we got that kind of relationship. I'm like, why can't he call you? He said, like, well, he's embarrassed. So I'm gonna make it easy for him. I'll call him. So this is the type of Adam Muller. This is what I know. This is the guy I knew. And that's the guy I miss. So. No question. That's awesome, Mac. That's awesome. That's awesome. And T New, gotta get the T New. See, T New, T New not only got to play with him, you know, T U T New got to spend a little bit more time with him. You know, after we left, T New got to see the transformation of him as the player when he didn't have to be uh, so unselfish. Um, you know, and and also um T New was right there in the cluster with us where we live. Uh he and I and Isla Mola uh in that little cluster. Um you know, T Noob, how was Adamola um, when you first met him? And talk about the evolution of him, um, you know, going into that 98, 99 season as well. Um, like the first time I met Adi my freshman year, it was just he had a maturity that you don't see in, you know, guys as a sophomore in college. You know what I'm saying? It was like, the way he ate, the way he took care of his body. Like, you know, we all pretty much ate what we want whenever we felt mm -hmm. like it. Like, he wasn't clubbing, partying, none of that stuff. Like, he was always about business. Like, on the court, Adi was a different person than he was off the court. Like, you talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, one of the coolest dudes, like you said earlier, Webb, like, the smile. But on that court, he just turned into somebody else. Like, he was the ultimate teammate, man. Like, especially... You know, when you guys were still there, he did all the little stuff. He didn't care about, you know, his shots. He wasn't thinking about none of that stuff because I felt like, you know, he knew his time was coming. He knew you and Mac was graduating. Twan events was about to leave. So he knew his time was coming. And watching how he took over as our leader my junior year was like, I was so happy for him because the shine he was getting. 
you know, he was all ACC. He was our leading scorer. We, you know, we only had him and Ed coming back from that year. And Brendan, you know, played a little bit his first year with, you know, with the six starters we had, you know, your senior year, Shamal. It was just watching him change and being that leader and taking over. And then you get to see how good of a player he was because, you know, he got to score more. He was more featured in the offense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes he would play the four, the three, wherever we needed him, man. Like, it was just – I felt good for him to be able to step out of the three amigo shadow and be able to get his own shot. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he really took that role, man. And and we had a good year, you know, because of him. Like, a lot of people overlooked that, that 98, right. 99 year because, like, the numbers he put up. Like, I, I was like – before that season started, I didn't know how we were going to be as far as scoring-wise. We had a good recruiting class coming in, you know, on paper. But Brendan was a fresh new starter. Chris was a new starter. We only had two starters coming back with Adi and Ed. So it was it was fun to watch him, man, come out of his shell and, and really get his credit that he deserved from doing the little things from guarding Tim Duncan to having to guard LaRon Prophet, whoever it may be. Mm -hmm. Like He just took it in stride, never complained, and was always willing to help. Freshman, anybody, you know how it was. Some, as a freshman, the hardest thing that that I felt like the biggest adjustment was learning that damn press offense. <laughs> and Adamola would say he knew everybody's spot. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if y'all remember. Like was it Max's freshman year? Like Max could not figure that stuff out to save his life. Mm -hmm. And Adi was he knew what I was supposed to do, what Max was supposed to do, what everybody was supposed to do. He was always willing to be there and be. And that like that to me, like I said, man, he was ultimate teammate bro and then like for us to to lose him like that the way he did like somebody that like I said took care of his body every single day ate healthy all through college like that maturity that he had man you just didn't see in people that age at that point yeah no question um you know Adamola was 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 most definitely uh different um from anybody that we had on our team um an individual that was irreplaceable for sure <clears throat> Um, and, you know, we talk about the first time we met him and things like that. But, I mean, you know, we also had some 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 pretty fun times with him, too. You know, I yeah. I remember, <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know who, who can remember. I remember him. I, I, I'm going to go to New York with Ed. And uh, <laughs> he went to New York with Ed and <laughs> he came back with that. That was it a Maxima? White <laughs> Maxima. <that> white Maxima. <laughs> Hey, oh, that's right. That's why you talk about already. how you can't drive. Oh man, everything is the auto ball. I mean, auto ball, we drive. No, no speed limit like auto ball. You not in auto ball. You got to do a speed limit. Like that's that was about the only negative thing you could say about him was his driving. But other than that, man, I mean, he was very impulsive. Uh, uh, he liked what he liked, and uh, that, that, that was him. Uh, I, I, I mean, his driving was bad, but uh, he's dating too. <laughs> If you want to give it, oh, right. yeah, no, he, he, was, you, know, he, you in college, that's when your day is supposed to be horrible. Like, hey, hey, hey man, yo, he's gonna come hey, down, you grab your feet at night, man. For that one, hey, <laughs> hey, listen, man, hey, I, I, I mean, Adamola, Adamola was a, um, uh, a very, let's say, uh, particular about. Yeah. You know, young mm -hmm. ladies that he chose to go out to dinner with and really? and, and, and things like that. I, I would say. Really um, particular? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm not taking this conversation, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what when you say right. when you say particular? I mean particular. I mean he I mean he, he's I mean he was a he was a you know out of all the now, you know, six nine, you know, he had that accent, you know, a lot of a lot of young ladies. Blender, you got the floor, Blend. You got the floor. <laughs> now I ain't got the floor. I don't want this floor. I hey, want I got, I got, I got something to say. I got Yo. something to say because I, I, go, I gotta go pick up my my son from baseball practice. But here's what I would say. Thinking about the the letter F, and I was thinking about Adamola, and I know y'all can get back to the funny stuff. But um, he was a faithful friend. Yep. He was a finisher. Yeah, you know, he fought the good fight and he, and he finished strong. And that's what we as men want to be like. We want to be finishers. And then um, I think of him with a fire in his spirit. Like he played with fire. 
he lived life with fire in a good way. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, faithful friend, finisher and fighter, and he played with fire. Let's go perfect. finish your day and go pick up your that, son. That's pretty that's good. Right that's there, pretty good, I like Web. that. I like that's that. good, Webb. I like Web. that. Now, now Mac will argue with you and say that F goes for his dating, too. Now, that, that I think that's what Mac Tall was trying to say earlier, but... Oh, but I didn't say that. He ain't no fool. <laughs> he, he, he was far from that now. But you, know, you, you far from being uh, a fool. You, you just you, foolish. Huh? You just foolish. That's all. He ain't no fool. Why? why, why? I ain't even gonna start that with you. Yo, Mac Tar is the hashtag no filter before it was ever invented. Oh, yeah. hey, look, hey, we, hey, if we cannot say what we need to say here among us, then we don't need to say it. One thing, one thing I always remember, and this goes back to T New. Be good with it. Seems like, Bye, guys. Thank y'all. Hey, well, you. Love you guys. Love you. 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 Love T knew always seemed like he knew how to get under outer mother skin, which oh, he knew for his Man. <laughs> I was like, no, oh, like I man. really, our first situation, like, yeah. <laughs> Y'all remember, we had a little situation in the gym one time. Yeah. Oh, and you know how it is, like, as a freshman, we don't know everybody yet. We don't know everybody's triggers and all that stuff. But long story short, he triggered me that time. And then, like, you know, it took us a while to, to get what we became before he left, you know what I'm saying? Before he got out of there his, his senior year. But like the respect was always there because I'm gonna like I'll tell you this, like you remember how we used to have them oranges in the locker yeah. room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One day, so we had the orange. I don't know if we had played pickup as long as after practice, I can't remember, but everybody was, you know, I'm like, yo, I was throwing the oranges. Whoever wanted one, I'm just throwing them to whoever went. Again, with his maturity, him being he was like, yo, T no, we don't throw food. <laughs> I'm like, bro, a whole like, dude, like, I, like I'm not about to walk around giving all y'all oranges hand to, like hand to hand. I'm not doing it. Like I'm just here, Ed, you want one, whoever. Like, but he really was on me about that because that again, coming where he comes from, he's telling me, you know, it's less fortunate people who don't have this. You know what I'm saying? Who wish they could have an orange? You know what I mean? Like the thinking process and me being a young, immature kid, like. Like, oh, this dude is nuts. Like, bro, like, you took that that far, like, it ain't that serious. But, again, that's him. And, and I did know how to get on this skin. Like, I used yeah, to just, did. Yes, you did. With him, you know what I'm saying? Just be like, yo, this dude. Is. But his that. maturity level, bro, was something different for me because, like, think about it. Like, even with Shaman and Mac being the older, like, we all had our fun. and But y'all wasn't like how that dude was. Like, yeah. I mean, the littlest thing, like, it, like his maturity level was, was yeah. like no other, bro. It anything he felt like was silly would bother him. Yeah, yeah like the peanuts on the plane. Uh, yep. Why they gotta go there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, thanks, 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 you remember the fella. peanuts on the plane? But you remember that? On the plane. I went on. We just leave it at that. Uh, Brendan, Brendan went there. I went on. There. I, I I wasn't there for that. Yeah, yeah Brendan oh, wasn't on the plane. Brendan wasn't on the plane. If he if he had been on that play. Oh, if Brendan was on there, it'd have been the yeah, whole so season. Weird. It'd have been comedy the whole season. I don't make me that. Don't make me that. I'm bad. <laughs> bro, bro <laughs> the commentary. Remember, like, you, if you was on that plane, Big Book, Big B, it'd have been jokes the rest of the year, bro. Forever. Man, but he was sick. He was silly too because I remember him buying that big teddy bear from Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Alaska <laughs> and you see him walking with the teddy bear, and the teddy bear is as big as he was. Doing that thing like yeah. this in the airport, I'm like, I think I, I, I think I have a picture of I that. Got one. Somebody oh, do. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then I think yeah. maybe your situation was almost like that. Like you was talking about earlier, how I don't even know where he got that two by four from. Oh man, he is. Yo, yeah, he came down the steps. Where did that come from? I mean, yeah, that's yeah. great. He had yeah, all, of us, all of us was downstairs because, yeah, we was out late waiting. Like, all like, of us was It was one person. All of us was wasn't downstairs. <laughs> right? you know, yeah, I, okay. I remember somebody <laughs> yelling down, like, yo, let me know if they come. Oh, hang like, on, somebody. Vince was yelling. I'm not down. letting you know. I'm not letting you know. Oh, you ain't down here now. Like, don't come down here. <laughs> that was Vince. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, he come yeah. he come out he come out of that thing come out that front door holding <laughs> his, pulling his pants up with his left hand 
Hold on, where that? Where that? Let's go. Where that? Let's go. I'm like, where that? Where that at? Where that at? But no, no, you know, listen, you know, Twan was his brother now. Like he, you, you bother Twan, you gonna have to fight him too. Yeah. Like you already know. Like them boys was like this. Yeah. I don't know. There wasn't no three amigos. It was two. Huh? I said, there wasn't no three amigos, it was two. <laughs> <laughs> that boy, I'm telling you, like, you, nah, you those are must be <laughs> Yeah, okay. I I would say this too, like, um, for I don't know, like, I don't know if you would call him sneaky or something like that. I wouldn't say he was sneaky. I would say Automola would show up or would be observant of things that you poss- you thought that he possibly wouldn't know. About, cause I I I remember this, uh, my sophomore year, um, I was pledging, and uh, <laughs> and I you know I couldn't take the elevator. I had to walk up the steps, and it never it, it never amazed me. No matter what time I was coming in, out of Mola, it would be like he would be standing at the door. He <laughs> stayed right across the hall from me, so he'd be at the door. He'd be like. I remember the first time I came in, he was like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. You you all right? Yeah. You, you all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool. He was like, you, you, you okay? And then I think once he, you know, figured out what was going on, you know, it seemed like no matter what time, if I came in at 11, if I came in at 2, it's like he was looking out his peephole, you know what I mean, to see what was going on. And, you know, he would always ask me, man, you okay? You want me to go get you some ice? You want me to get you some stuff like that, man? You know, and, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you're going through some things like that, it, it, it you know, it makes you think back to, you know, like, you know, people that always wanted to help you or was involved and stuff like that. And even though he probably didn't know exactly what was going on, he always was offering something, you know, to help. And uh, you know the 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 one thing about him, he would always offer the help, but he would never ask for help. He would never let you know, like he was dealing with something. He would never let you know, you know, how he was feeling. Like he was able to put on a face or, um, you know, just be so prideful that, you know what I mean? No matter what he was going through, he just was going to take it on the chin and keep moving. Like you said earlier, Mac Tar, like, like nothing happened. So, I mean, some people would say that's stubbornness, some type of stubbornness. And so on the, on the, better side of that on the on the good side of those types of things let's talk about his stubbornness <laughs> he got <him. laughs> Honestly, <That's... laughs> I, I don't think he was stubborn actually he just did not know what? no it's like seriously like we assume that Adamola knew all these things and most of the time he ain't know none of them and he will look at you like you he'll ask you a question and mm-hmm. you, I know it happened with me a lot of times. He'll ask me a question. I look at him like, yo, that's a stupid question. What do you mean? Uh, I don't know. Like, what do you mean you don't know? Everybody knows this. Oh, uh, well, I'm not from here. That was his favorite excuse. I'm not from here. You know? So he will yeah. say, he will say things like when he bought that 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 Maxine, like he used to call it. The first yeah. time I asked him, I'm like, I don't want to where the where the where the, uh, the car, the papers. Uh well, uh. I'm like, well, uh, where are the papers? Where's the title? So they were supposed to send it to him, supposedly. <laughs> but how are you going to buy a car and they you ain't get the papers with you? Back to well, he went up there with Ed what, Carter. What'd you expect well, was going to happen? I, mean, <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but... Hey, you, know. you, talk about, you talk about he was stubborn. As soon as we tried to tell him, hey, man, you got to take that back. You got to send that back. He was like, mm-mm, this is my car. This is my car. <laughs> This is my car and I paid for it. Like, you know, you tell him, I don't know, you can't put that on that car. Yes, yes, I can. You remember he had the little thing on the Jersey steering wheel. place on that car the entire time he had. <laughs> yeah, you can't drive that car, out of Mola. Oh, yes, I can. It. Yeah, he did. So you don't think he that was did. stubborn? 
I think he was just like not knowing. Man, please, he knew you were going to go to jail. You got caught with no <laughs> license. What are you talking about? Hey. He was very prideful, man. Yeah. You know like, yeah I know, like, I can I mean, never remember a time, like, knowing then any of his personal businesses, if he, like you said, if he was going through anything, I can't remember a time of him ever letting nobody know that. Mm -hmm. No, nah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we all like... had our situations with dealing with stuff, or, but I can never, I don't remember him ever, like, having a conversation with him about personal stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, were you ever able to make him order something he didn't want to order, Mac Talk? Nah, you not. No. no, no. He'll make him. No. He'll make him go in there. He'll make him go in there. I don't see it on the menu. You yes. come back. You put this in that. Then, hmm. Yeah. Let you know what he wanted, though. He like, make, look, like, like, Mac said, you make, make, make him order last. Let him order last. I'm like, I don't know, you're going to order last. You can't order first, man. So they're going to mess up our food. So just wait. But, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so. I want to come back to this thing, man, as far as Ali goes. And uh, and I, I can't believe we're sitting here talking about him in the past. You know, it's just, right. you know, I, I, I don't want to, like, kill the, the mood. But, you know, this is a guy who, who, who cares about everybody he encounters. Even people he don't remember their names. So he will sit there talking about, you remember that guy? I'm like, who? We saw him on the yard. Who I didn't want to. Uh, he tall. Okay. Is he white or black? <laughs> so that's that's all. And he'll try to like, he'll get on your nerve, try to remember somebody that have no meaning to whatever you're doing at that time. But that's just who he was, you know. Those details make him special. You know? Yeah, like to me, like he always cared about other people. Like, like we brought up Vince, like. Adi had called me, I guess it was just like right around COVID when COVID was hitting and it was like, yo, we all want to get together and see if we can go, you know, catch one of Vince's last games. It was like his last year playing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely down to do that. But luckily, like I said, before COVID hit, I went to Atlanta and I hit Vince up and I got my own tickets. I just let him know I was going to be there. I just, but after that, he had hit me up and was like, yo, we all trying to get together to go. <laughs> see, and I'm like, I don't want to see Don't say what, Brendan Haywood. Don't say nothing. Come on, but nah, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, stuff like that. Like, you know, he, he was definitely trying to orchestrate that, man. But like I said, COVID yeah. and all that stuff. But that's just who he was, bro. When I when I think, like, with Audie, though, like, for me, it was a little bit different coming in as a, as a younger player. Because, obviously, at that point, I wasn't really that mature. Didn't have the right mindset all the time. But I never had, like, I would have run-ins with different upperclassmen. I never had, he never had nothing negative to say. And it was always like, hey, man, you could do this, or you could do that. It was always positive. It was never like, hey, man, you might need to be more serious, or you might need, it, it was always positive. When he took over as the leader of our team our sophomore year, it was always about the team. Like, this guy's NBA stocks on the line. It was always positive. He worked hard every day. I don't have one negative Adamola Okalaja story. You know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing negative to say because that's that's how I was never presented. He was always a leader in my eyes. And that year we ended up, we had a good year. People didn't think we we're gonna be good. We get upset first round by Weber State. And as everybody else is <coughs> in the locker room and he's talking to the young guys like, yo, take this with you and let it make you better next year. I'm like, yo, this dude's crazy. Like, like it, this is his time to shine. His career is over, and he's worrying about how it affects the rest of us and how we should take it with us next year as motivation when we work out in the offseason. That's different. That's totally different. Ain't nobody else that age thinking about what the next group should do next year, and they're not going to be a part of that group. Like, you know, he, in, in probably his lowest moment as a Tar Heel, all he could do was think about, the rest of us and what we were going to be next year. So I have tremendous respect for him. Um, uh, true luck, Tar Heel love for him. And he was one of those, he's just, like y'all like y'all have said the whole time, he's always been cut differently. He walks differently and he's not ashamed to be different. Some dudes don't want to be different or some dudes don't know how to be different without being confrontational. He's like, yo, that's who he is. 
And he's a great leader because he's not trying to be like everybody else. I, I love to do it. Nothing negative to say ever about Adam O'Loca last year. Yeah, I, I, I you know, definitely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, even if I, even if you had a situation with him, like once it was done, like the the respect and all that stuff, like it, it, it remained the same, man. Like he he cared about team. He cared about the University of North Carolina basketball. That's all. Bottom line, that's all he cared about. Like I said before, like stats and all that. That stuff came later for him, but he never cared about anything else about except for us being a good team, no matter what year it was. In my case, it's, uh, you know, there's times that something happened in the game that, you know, makes you look at the coach. And you're like, oh, let's see what coach reaction is about. I, it, when he was in the, in the team, when I was with him, I always looked at him first. Let me see, oh, let me look at, at Adi, see how he reacts to the situation. But even before I, I looked at Coach Gut, I was already looking at his reaction. I said, like, okay, let's see what he's gonna, how he's going to react. Is he going to say, and I was like, okay, his fist. Now we got to, like, turn around this. You know what I'm saying? And, right. and I always was looking at him, see how he reacts to every situation, positive or negative. Even before I looked at, at, at Coach Gut, you know, and, and that time. And, and and I remember that, I guess it was yesterday. It, it, it was it was, uh, it was an experience. It's, it's an amazing experience to be in the court with him and, and spend time with him after that. It, it was crazy. Yeah. I just I just recall uh when we were in uh the when we came toward the reunion, what was that, three years ago? Yeah. Four years. And uh yeah. I'm sitting yeah. with him at the hotel. We're sitting in the lobby and Ed Geff walks in. And <laughs> I'll never forget this. I remember was facing Ed actually. And I had my back turned on the door, so I could not see Ed walk in. So <laughs> I remember all of a sudden just was like this. I'm like, what's wrong with you? He said, turn around, but do it slowly. I'm like, turn around, do it slowly. No. I'm like, somebody's back. I'm like, and I just turned. I'm like, oh, damn, big holy. And Adam Mother was like, we need to have a team meeting. I'm like, why? He didn't say that. I swear to God. I say, why? He said, because we need to help this guy. And I'm sitting there looking at Oak. I'm like, oh, well, I came here to celebrate this thing, man. I ain't got time for Edgar. <laughs> but he insisted. And we had like an hour and a half conversation sitting there about eating salad and which salad he should be eating, which tomato he should be eating. And I'm like looking at them too. And Ed was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. He didn't do nothing. Obviously, we all know that he didn't do nothing. But that's... that's but yo, you, you're not telling the whole story how that night ended. Well, you, you messing with him. <laughs> Tell us. I forgot. No, he, listen, it was me, you, Voss, Ed, Big Rolly. And I, Voss was there. The right. <laughs> Mac being Mac. <laughs> the night ended because he pissed out of y'all. I was like, yo, I ain't got time for this shit. He got up and went upstairs. <laughs> he, just, he just got up and left because Mac just wouldn't leave him alone. <laughs> he was trying to fix everybody's problem. I'm like, dude, come on, man. You can't, this dude ain't gonna lose weight overnight. That's not gonna happen. Let it go. But well, that's how I want to work. He was a giver, you know? Yeah. Always when he Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. Come on. I don't know what I'll, Quan's I'll, laughing I'll, at right now. Quan, what you laughing at? Hold on, Scott. Yeah, no, no, no. I was, I was just gonna say the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad some of you were taking shots at him as well, just like I did, because it would be unfair if we didn't tell both sides of the story and have a little fun because he was our teammate. That's but at right. At the same time, even post, you know, when we were in school together, he'd come to Charlotte and this is, you know, I got to, I got to balance it out. Right. I got to tell on him a little bit in the bad and I got to tell him a little bit for the good. But right. He would come to Charlotte and he'd come over to the house. We would do dinner. I'd have to listen to him talk about all this fake meat and all this dietary stuff, but that was fine. But at one point he and both my boys are gone have no idea where they are. They just disappeared, up and disappeared in the middle of the night. I walk upstairs and I find in in, uh, in one of my little boy's bedrooms, and, and these two boys at this time are probably like four and six, something like that, five and seven. And Adi is sitting on the floor of their bedroom and they are mesmerized, listening to him talk to them. And the the eye contact, they have never made eye contact with me as a dad <laughs> in my life. 
but they were so enthralled with Adi because he, everybody's kind of hit back to this, but he genuinely cared and he genuinely took interest in them. And he had just met them, but you know, that they, they just thought this was so incredible that someone would hit them and literally on their level because he sat down on the floor so that he could look at them in the eyeball. Now, the he was one of those first friends of mine that that they really thought this guy is special now unfortunately they found some others that they also think are really special one of them which i do not understand is see here's maktar uh is, is maktar they think maktar oh, hung the moon as well but Adi <laughs> was the first who went to the effort to really genuinely engage them and that is is, is kind of uh in, in, exactly what everybody's been talking about is how genuine he was yeah yeah well, I, got a, I got a question i got a question for y'all you know how many times Ademola went home with just any of us all the time so how many teammates do you have or have you played with that took so much you know interest into like your life to know your family, to know, you know, your kids, your aunts, your... <clears throat> I don't want to never been to Senegal with me, but he knew all my family. He knew them all. So mm -hmm. to just tell you what type of dude he was, man, this is beyond basketball, man. And I think if we need to learn something from him, him not being here, is what he left us. You know, do a better job, like reaching out, you know, to each other. And, you know, just a phone call, a text message, just trying to, you know, to stay in touch with people, man, because this is, this, this, I'm, I'm just thinking, man, Oak took the time to do that with Scott's son, right? He went home with Ed Cole. How many of us went home with Ed Cole? I wouldn't. Hell no. Exactly. <laughs> so, parents, you went because you have no choice. In all seriousness. What I mean, the hell no? How many, no, seriously, <laughs> how many people like just, I mean, dude, Adam Moller was like, he flew in from Germany to go to witness Vince last game. He didn't have to do it. You know, think, he did not have to do it. We take for granted too, Mac. And uh, like you said, I mean, everybody knows Adam Moller loved his brother and his mom. And to be in Europe and to come even though he had his brother doing his time at Carolina and when he was in the States. And I think the one thing I really take from this whole scenario is that, you know, probably a year or two before he ended up passing, he was real stern, like, man, you got to come, come to Germany, meet the boys and stuff like that. And I think sometimes we always feel like people are going to be there. We always feel like, especially mm -hmm. out of he didn't drink, he didn't smoke. I mean, ate well. I mean, it was just like, if anybody's going to outlive all of us, it's definitely going to be him. But you take for granted, you know, how genuine he was and family oriented. And like I said, he would drop anything at the drop of a hat to come see his brothers, to come support any one of us. And I think, you know, especially after all this has happened, it's just like, you kind of take little things for granted. You know, I, I think Mac Talk will always be there. You know, I, I'm in the grocery store, they're going to be wood. I, I see be wood, you know, sooner or later. But it's like little things like that. I think we have to, you like, know. you said what? You don't offer to pay for them groceries, though. Oh, no, no, no. You, you still get you're still getting that TV money, so I know you're good, so I ain't got to worry about that. But it's just like, <laughs> and that's the one thing about Carolina, you know, Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge, they always stress about family, and things of that nature. And, and Adamola was probably at the top of that list because he didn't talk about it. He didn't, you know, do it out there. He actually lived that and he, he walked the path of, of the things that we learned at Carolina and the things we try to teach our kids and things to this day. But, hey, man, I, I love him. You know, I still can't believe he's not here. I love everybody on this call, uh, anybody that put on a jersey because, I mean, that moment that we're talking about Help shape not only myself but all of us from being young boys and becoming men, and now you know we have our own family, and it's different because you know he's not a part of that. You know, there's no more seeing that face, and 
no more telling them, slow down, man. I don't understand what you're saying, but and you know, <laughs> they're just taking it with a grain of salt. But you know, it's just open our eyes, man. We really have to, you know, we, we love each other because we all was at a certain particular point in time at the same time, and still to this day, we have that bond. But it's just different now that you know he's not here and so forth. But there'll never be another one like him. I can tell you that now. No. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, Tom. Yeah. Like to me, that's that's the the biggest thing. Like it's almost like we we spoil to the point of what Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge after that like instilled in everybody. Like to this day, bro. Like I hate to be late. Yeah. Like my wife is like, oh my god. Like we be, I be ready. To, you know what? You know, I, I'm gonna leave your ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I cannot stand to be late, bro, because of the things that was instilled in us at that point. You know what I mean? Like, I'm let's like for this call. You know what time I set this shit up? Five fifteen. I'm <laughs> sitting here waiting on Shaman to let us in because as it's just in me, bro. I just can't stand to be late. So it's just like that stuff that we learned in the and being in the trenches together, man. All that time we spent together, bro. It's like I feel like we were one of the closest teams, hey, pretty girl. I feel like we was one of the closest teams ever, man. Like in the history of Carolina basketball. Because we did so much outside of the court, out off the court. Like, oh my God. Like I, I think back to <laughs> Tuan, don't don't kill me, but I, I I be laughing. I was telling my son the story about about a year ago about Alaska when somehow you got separated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back with the dogs, that was hilarious. Yeah, the dogs come yeah. through, like Coach Hammond's dog with the dogs stand and stop the sled. And I'm like, hold on, like, wasn't no driver in there, Tuan wasn't in there. I don't Corey. know what was going on. But, you know, we had to be at different spots to wait. And yeah. then about 15, 20 minutes later, you just see a figure come. Tuan, you like Usain Bolt coming down through there, bro. <laughs> like, I ain't never seen, I was like, yo, and he was shook. Tuan was like, I thought a moose or something would jump out and get me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. just think about all them stories I got, man. I remember so much, bro. Like, I wouldn't change that time in my life for nothing, man. Having to go through that stuff with you guys, bro. I couldn't think of a better group. And yeah. Adi was a big part of that because we all have some kind of relationship with him, bro. And it's like, to be talking about him in the past since, like, this this one hurts, man. Like, that, that one hurt to lose Adi like that, bro. That, was, yeah. that, that made me sick to my stomach. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the great thing about it is is being able to to spend time with one another and to to honor them. Um, you know, it was difficult for all of us uh, to get that call, not just the teams, but the Carolina family. It was difficult to, to get that telephone call, um, you know, and, you know, it 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 brings life full circle. And like you said, like you guys said, a lot of times you you just you just anticipate or think it's just going to be this way all the time, and un unfortunately, um, it's not. Um, you know, but the greatest thing is that you know we were able to to celebrate him. Um, more importantly, we were able to go to war with him. You know, th that's the one thing about you know you look at this call everybody who's been on here and everybody's on here, we've, we've all seen each other at our lowest times and we've all seen each other at our highest times. And we know that the success that we've had and we've experienced has not been just because of us. It's been because of others. And we know that whatever we've become as men and whatever we have celebrated as, as former student athletes at the University of North Carolina, we know that Adamola Okalaja played an intricate part in all of that. And, um, you know, the, the, the toughest thing, I say the toughest thing for me is because for me, all of you guys are like my little brothers, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I've always tried to carry like that, but you know, you guys are me, but you know, I always, you know, go to war for you. And to not be able to go to war for one of our brothers, I think that was the most difficult part for me. But I do find 
happiness in being able to say that I'm glad that I was able to spend time with them. You know, when he came to Atlanta, we were able to, you know, spend time with them, uh, you know, at the game. And we sat and talked for about four hours and things like that. So, you know, um, hopefully, hopefully we will continue to do these things, uh, you know, for us, but also in memory of Adamola as well. Um, as if I'm not mistaken, I think Tuan, we were there. They were talking about doing a basketball camp for him uh, every year over there in, in Germany. And and I think they have like a, a concert and things like that that we were able to participate and go to. That was that was really nice. And they honored Alamola uh, during the concert and things like that. So, you know, for myself, God permitting, uh, every year, if possible, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to try to participate in that. But hopefully... We as a group, we can do something here to get ourselves together and, uh, you know, and, and celebrate him and, and celebrate us as well. Um, because, um, you know, nobody does the things that we do as a as a team. And, and like somebody said this before, Mac used to always say this. He said, Shimon, we we weren't able to win a national championship. He said but we do have the closest team to ever play at the University of North Carolina. And uh, with you guys being on this call in, uh, in honor of Alamona and, uh, you know, setting this uh, Carolina conversation 2022-2023 season, it shows you that everything that uh, everybody says about us as a family is true. And uh, I want to take the time to thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to be a part of this and to celebrate um, the one and only number 13, Adamola Okalaja. Brother, you'll be missed, sure. but you'll always be loved. And we're okay. gonna miss you. Hey man, thank you. Thank you, man. Well, one thing <laughs> I would like to say is, if, especially everybody on this call, just from time to time, reach out to his brother. Let him know you're thinking about him. And also, Adamola has two sons as well. Um, what I'll be doing probably like every couple of months, I'll be care packaging, whether it's Tar Heel memorabilia or stuff like that, to send back to his kids to let them know that the Tar Heel family is still thinking about him and, and so forth. But there'll be something I'll send a quick text to everybody when I do do it. But, you know, his boys, really felt it as you you know you saw when we was there uh mac talked to to them a lot as well but i definitely want to continue to keep his name alive and let him know that the tall hill family here in the united states is still thinking about his dad and just send him some stuff from time to time as well 